offered more than my necessary food. Well, I, I went to a cookout yesterday. I was starved. I don't know why, but I was famished. Couldn't choose between a hot dog or a hamburger. I love grilled food. That's why I keep my slim, slim waistline. But I couldn't make my mind up between a hamburger or a hot dog. And when y'all get in that position, what do y'all do? You got it. That's right. Hallelujah. Just eat both, praise God. But I tell you what, I, I found out enough to know that the Bible, the Word of God, is more precious than the food we eat. More than the honey from the honeycomb. Amen. Is that what it means to you? Is it is it that important to you? I tell you what, I I was up here, we was up here praying for Sister Scroggum the other night, and I know I just was my spirit was just reaching, trying to get up, pray through for her, and and I, and at my my heart just I went to look around for the Bible, and I seen the preacher's Bible, and I just pulled it over close to me. Amen. I know y'all think that's strange, but I just wanted to put my hands on it and thumb through the pages. Here's where this is the source of what we're doing. Coming out of this book, there's power in this book right here, huh? How many times has the doctor prophesied you're not going to live six months and you just keep living because the doctors don't know everything? Amen. Now. I'm going to talk to you just a little bit more about this physician here this morning, and we're going to move along because I've already dealt with it a couple of times. But I want you to look at Christ's presence among these sinners and publicans. I'm going to tell you you don't have to go far in this world to find a sinner and a publican. And uh, Christ, uh, it came to pass, verse 10, that Jesus sat at meat in the house, probably Matthew and his friends. Many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Now, this is talking in a natural sense, using a natural illustration for a spiritual application. He's not, when he talks about them being sick, he's not just talking about, you know, arthritis and cancer and stomach trouble. He's talking about their spiritual needs. Because, you know, as far as I know, these are just sitting here eating and going. And, and, and uh, you know, how many's got loved ones that you know needs a, a, a spiritual physician? You, you can track it back and you see a lot of sad things in this world. And I mean, sad things. Uh, you know, just things. Uh, and I don't even want to go into it. Read in, in the newspaper and stuff. Uh, I was reading about the the Oriental man and woman out in Virginia Tech, there in a restaurant, and he just something just came over him while he was sitting there eating with that young lady. He just pulled out an old dull knife and cut her head off. Now, and I, I ain't even mention that because you know I don't. I mean, there's enough gore. In the world without us magnifying on it and just dwelling on it all the time. But it is happening. And you say, well, what in the world caused somebody to do that? Anybody know? You say, ah, you blame the devil for everything. Well, it's uh, it's sin is what the problem is. And, uh, uh, you know, we need a revival in America. I believe that we could have a gospel revival in America. I believe we could have a gospel revival in our homes. Amen. I believe it would cure a lot of this violent problem, a lot of this evil, a lot of jealousy, a lot of this d- depression. Amen. And so Jesus came and he sat down among these people because... He was sent to sit down among these people. I come not into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Our our goal and heart for this world ought to be to, and here's the deal. Let me read some more. I don't know how it's going to go. It won't go long. I know that. But listen. He says, he said, they that hold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. Go ye and learn what that meaneth. Oh, 
Lord, I wish I could preach to you this morning. Sometimes, you know, we have a great, we had a great meeting here this week, and we heard a lot of stuff. But, you know, if we don't learn what these things mean, it doesn't help us. He said, now look, he said, look, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here, amen, with these sinners because they're sick and they need help. And I'm here because I am the physician. And I'm going to sit here with them because they need what I've got to offer. And I'm going to be here ready to help them and available when they need me. Amen. He said, that he that is whole needeth not a physician. Now, now there's a sickness, and there's a lot. Of Sister Scroggum has a rare disease that's invented by some foreign foreigner. I can't say it. I don't know. And it's and it's it's a it's a horrible trial. We're gonna keep praying to the Lord heals her, aren't we? Amen. But in a spiritual sense, there's people with a lot worse condition, spiritually speaking, that gnaws at them and gets you know requests we pray. Uh, you know a lot a lot of times. Uh, I hope I can help you this morning. You know, when you think of physicians and, you know, and I don't mean to refer to the trial that, that they went through this week, but a lot of times they'll, 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 you know, the Scripture says the one woman suffered many things of many physicians, and the result of it, they rather grew worse. Is that what the Bible says? Have you ever tried things in this world and realized after trying them and trying them and trying them, they're not working. But when you bring a spiritual need, now I'm not against, you know, anybody that can study and bring comfort to somebody in pain. or I'm not against the medical field. But I'm going to tell you, when it comes to uh, uh, surety, the great physician, Jesus Christ, is the, really the only one that has the answer to it. And when it comes to a spiritual sense, uh, how many how many believes with me this morning? God help me this morning. How many believes that we as a people need, amen, a spiritual healing this morning? And he said, he said, he that's whole, and then he says, I want you to get what this means, this illustration about he that is whole needeth not a physician, but he that is sick. I want you to understand, and I'd love for my church to understand this this morning. What does this mean? Now look what he said. Learn. What that meaneth? How many of you are out of school and glad of it? Huh? I got out of school, and I, I don't. Tell, I didn't tell my kids a lot how high I jumped when I finally got out of school. I didn't like school, and I I went to school. Y'all know Ralph Van Dyke, don't you? I went to school with Ralph. He eat his pencils. I remember I, he made, he wouldn't even want me to tell that. He, he the teacher kept giving him pencils. He'd eat his pencils. I. We didn't learn a whole lot. We just eat our books and pencils and forgot it. But this right here, there, here's something worth learning right here. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. How many would like to learn more about the Lord and His plan? Come on now. How many is going to say, I'll go to school, I'll sit here and learn? You know, learning it means changing sometimes. When you learn better... How many has done one thing so long and then found a better way to do it and was so glad you changed the way you were doing it because it was a better way to do it and you learned better? Anybody here ever learned better? You know what's so pitiful? We go to church and learn the creed and got, got all of our, our, our uh, articles of faith on a little old card that we can stick in our inside pocket and we think we got her nailed down, buddy. I'm keeping the rules. How many knows there's more to learn than that? How many knows the depths of his riches goes beyond our explanation? You say, I'm a little bored with religion. There's something bad wrong, friend. Huh? He said, now I want you to learn what this means. And I'd love for our church to learn this this morning. Because if we can learn this, it will take the edge off of our experience where the world can be touched by, amen, what we have in our heart. Now, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, look at this right here. Now, we can't bypass this. He says, I want you to learn what this means. And here's what it says. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. Now, I, I'm going to touch this. We'll be done. Maybe I ought to give you a little. This morning I got up to study and, and uh, about it was daylight and and I, I got up to get in a place where I could study, and 
I don't know if y'all have ever done this. I fell asleep trying to study. You know, I, I pondered this over and how far I ought to go this morning. And if the Lord would help me this morning, I don't feel like I'm helping anybody yet this morning, but I, I'm going to give you this. I didn't want to go beyond this. I would have mercy and not sacrifice. That's my lesson this morning. I would have mercy and not sacrifice. But anyway, I had a dream when I, I, I went to sleep about 6.30. Amen. I'd been up and, and 6.30 out again I went and I had a dream just laying out of my head on the arm of the couch. And I dreamed I was preaching in a place, not here, but somewhere else. And, and I got up to preach, and I couldn't remember what I was going to preach on. And I knew I had a little note in there with the Scripture wrote on it and what I was going to preach, and I couldn't find it. And there they sat, you know, they, they, they were just waiting on me. A lot of preachers I knew were there. I won't mention their names, but they were there. And I just kept looking, and I couldn't find it. So there's a side door, and I said, man, if I can get out of here, they're staring at me. Maybe I can check this Bible out and find my notes. So I went in there, brother, and I know I just ate too much. It's what, too many burgers or something. But I went in the side room, left them sitting out there looking at each other, and I shook my Bible out, and the Reader's Digest fell out of it. And my notes was in that Reader's Digest. But by the time I got it all together, and they were, they decided to take up another offering while I was in there. And it was a pretty good offering. But when I got out to the pulpit, everybody had, had left. They decided they'd just have a working. And they have everybody was vacuuming and out cleaning stuff, and nobody wanted to hear me preach. And there was one preacher there that y'all would all know that was complaining a little bit because he'd given the offering and hadn't heard no preaching yet. <laughs> my brother Paul Marquis. Hallelujah. I just, I'll just tell you his name. Right there. He was complaining. He put in my offering, and I didn't preach. Couldn't find my notes. Well, I hope that's not the way it is this morning. I hope I can't. I, but there's a sermon in this. Amen. How, and you, I've, I've preached this before. But Jesus, you've got to get this if you're going to be Christ-like. He said, I would have mercy and not sacrifice. I, I'm not, I did not come to put these people in hell because they're sick, spiritually sick. They are spiritually, I think we've got people that come to our churches a lot of times, sometimes all of us, who are wounded and hurting, sick, spiritually speaking. Amen. And I tell you what, we can't, how many knows we can't afford to lose one? Amen. We come to the house of God and the devil will ride you and he'll, he'll, he'll push you. Amen. You'll get down. Uh, and the first thing the devil will tell you, amen, is to stay away from church. Just stay home. Nobody loves you anyway. Just stay at the house. But I, I've been in this long enough to know now that that is the devil talking to you. Because he knows that when, the, uh, you know, like the Good Samaritan, when them old lawyers come up to Jesus and said, uh, you know, who is my neighbor? Because he just had told them uh, to love the Lord thy God uh, with all thy heart, mind, and strength, uh, and thy neighbor. Come on now, church. Uh, amen. If you th- come on, I wish I could preach to you. Uh, amen. We cannot separate uh, our neighbor uh, from our experience with God. Uh, amen. Because it will not work. Uh, he said, love God uh, and your neighbor. Neighbor, God and your neighbor, God and your neighbor, God and your neighbor, God and your neighbor. That's the cross in your life. Amen. And what should our attitude be? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Don't let me get too off on you here now. But somebody that can find fault in one but not in their self, what do you call them? What Jesus call them? What did Jesus call somebody that could, could get the little thing out of their neighbor's eye and had something big in their own eye? What did he call it? What's quiet in here anyway? Hallelujah. He called him a hypocrite. Huh? We can't just look, amen, and criticize and be critical. Now, I want you to understand what, I, what I'm saying when I talk about mercy. How many knows that that rich man in hell... Amen. Uh, the Bible com- compared this. The Lord's been dealing with me about this. Uh, but how many knows uh, that the Bible doesn't really tell what sins that rich man had committed? Was it a sin to be rich? Well, come on, church. I know us poor folk kind of want to find out. And maybe it is. But is it is it a sin to be rich? No. Well, what was his sin? He had purple on and fine linen. Was it a sin to ride, wear purple and fine linen? Oh, come on now, church. No, it was not. Then what in the world caused this man that the Latin called him dives? Dives means, and the Latin means rich man. I wonder if we got any here this morning. 
You say, not with money, but how many of you God's given you so many other good things? But you know what I think dive sin was? Uh, Amen. He he saw this man sitting daily at his gate, uh, and he walked over him uh, and ignored him. uh, Amen. And had no mercy on him. uh, Amen. And was indifferent toward his need. Uh, Oh, if somebody helped this preacher this morning. uh, Amen. He said, I would have mercy uh, and not sacrifice. I even think old Dives probably was religious. Because he said, Amen, send, send Lazarus to warn my people. He knew a little bit about it. Huh? He was religious. He might even went up at the temple and made sacrifice and stepped over Lazarus every, every day to get back at his house. He never offered any more mercy. Now, I don't think mercy... Now, help me now. I've seen... I've seen parents that had mercy on their children. What that meant was they just covered for them. I don't believe that's mercy, just to excuse people's sin. I think people will go to hell like that. But mercy is to give them, amen, a physician that will heal. Amen. Here's a man that cusses and drinks and smokes. uh, Amen. And lies uh, and cheats on his companion. uh, Amen. What's he need? Send him to hell. But why don't we cure him? Uh, Why don't we cleanse him with the blood? Uh, Why don't we give him, uh, amen, a helping hand uh, to pull him out of his sins uh, into righteousness? Oh, y'all not getting this. Not your fault. It's mine. Praise God. Now, how many knows when you got saved? How many remembers that day, that night, that morning, amen, that you got saved uh, and how tender your heart was? Uh, I had a few enemies, uh, but I loved them when I got saved. Uh, I met people on the street that I had conflict with, amen, but I, it wasn't there anymore. Uh, amen, Christ's spirit uh, in my heart, uh, amen, gave me a heart of mercy, uh, amen. That's why when somebody, amen, uh, 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 does wrong and God saved you from it, one guy, one guy had a bad habit of chewing tobacco. He couldn't shake it, and I really don't think Christians ought to chew or dip or smoke. Uh, they ought not be bound by any habits. Or, or and let's go a little further. I don't think they ought to be hooked on prescription drugs either. <laughs> huh? Well, how to get off on that? Well, this fella chewed, and, and so he one day he, the Lord really moved on him, and he gave up his tobacco. And the, and the very next service, Brother Josh, they asked him to testify, and he got up and he skint everybody in there that was using tobacco. And he just got delivered one one day, you know, probably still had the smell on his breath. Amen. Come on now. I, I'll tell you what, we ought to give folks as much mercy at least as we got ourselves. Somebody say, man, y'all ain't liking that, are you? Huh? You say, well, so-and-so hurt my feelings. Uh, they lied on me. Aren't you glad it was a lie? Huh? That's right. Be thankful it's a lie. It's, hey, hey, what I'm preaching to you this morning will transform your life. It'll take some of those worry lines out of your face. It won't make you good looking now. Don't, don't get me wrong. It ain't that big a miracle, but it'll take some of that sense out of your face. Huh? When you forgive others, when you have mercy instead of sacrifice, Oh, I go up there every day, take that lamb up there, cut its throat. And the Lord said, I hear the bleeding of the lamb. I see the blood flowing. But you're going to leave here, and you're going to be mean to your neighbor. You're going to be mean to your companion. You're going to beat around on your kids when you ought not. Amen. Brother, I will tell you what. This this old hard uh, religion has done more damage to the movement of Christ than, than the world has nearly. Huh? You say, what are you talking about? You mean we ought not preach holy? Now, come on now. You know better than that. You, that's the same excuse. Amen. People use all the time. You just don't love holiness. I love it. I love it inside, first, outside. I believe women ought to be modest. I believe men ought to be modest. I believe they ought to talk right, spit white. Come on now. I really do. But if you do all of that without a tender heart, you are you are giving the wrong impression to the world of what Jesus really is. Come on now. And I believe we ought to take that Bible. And if God even hints 
at something in the Bible, we ought to make it a point of our devotion. Come on now. Amen. But we cannot forget uh, that the Lord uh, desires mercy and not sacrifice. He wants this world to be healed. He does not want them to be cast into hell. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. Anybody, I don't think there's anybody here holding a grudge this morning. We've had too good a meeting. All the grudges went out down the Levitical River. But just in case. And you know, I've often wondered. I remember hearing a preacher's wife stand up one time and testify about being a pastor's wife all in years. I'm not being critical because I've said the same thing many times. And she got up and she said somebody had done them wrong in church. Lied on them, you know, lied on her and the pastor. And said, somebody asked me. If I forgive them, she said, I said they haven't repented yet. She said, well, that makes sense. No, it doesn't. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what. You forgive, you forgive people that do you wrong because it helps you. It don't save them. How many knows it don't save them? They're not going to be saved till they confess and repent and have the blood covered. It won't, it won't change them, but it'll loosen you up a little. It'll straighten your old back up a little. You say, and you just, you say, I, I, you're sitting here this morning, and you say, I, I, don't, I don't think it's that easy. I didn't say it was easy. You get under the flow and the blood and look at Calvary. Brother, I'll tell you, we had some preaching in here this week. Hey, man, the way Jesus was preached and what he went through on Calvary, how in the world can we hold a little old grudge because somebody killed her dog? Y'all are a great bunch of people. Y'all just ain't a real good judge on pastors. I don't know how you got me in here. I ain't helping y'all that good. But I'm going to tell you I, what, I, what I'm talking about, I know something about. You say, how do you, you're an expert on it. I did not say I was an expert on it. But I do know when I get that over, that bitterness comes in there. Amen. That's why I said Sister Scroggum is a soldier of the cross. Uh, amen. They, some people laid home today. Uh, amen. Because, uh, amen, they had indigestion. Hallelujah. Or less. She just keeps on coming. She asked God to heal her, and, and God God hasn't really totally healed her yet. But she had her hands up, uh, praising the Lord. Uh, I can hear Job say, though you slay me, yet I'll trust you. Brother, I need him. Uh, he saved my soul, uh, and it makes it easier to forgive uh, when you realize where the Lord has brought you from. Can you say that? And he talks about this mercy as relating to this physician. And how many knows that a physician, a good physician, does have mercy, compassion? Huh? I, I remember Brother Robert telling about Teresa Benson sick that year. I remember her heart was just going wild, and he was standing in the waiting room. The doctors were in the hall, and one of them said to the other, what would you give her? And he said, I give her this and that. And he said, well, you know you're going to kill her, don't you? Well, that really built Brother Robert's faith up in those doctors. You know, huh? Now, physicians are human. But I know one that can take care of it. Not just physical problems, but I know one that can take care of spiritual problems, which is the greatest need we have. Huh? But I'll tell you what, he wants a church that has the first thing you think of. Hey, listen to this. I'm going to let you go. You've heard, you've heard the preachers preach about, and I don't remember who it was. I'm glad I don't. But they said he went to a church to preach, a real strict church. And, and the town sleazy woman, the harlot, came to church. And, brother, they treated her like, and I, and I hope you get this right. She was a sinner, but she was a low sinner, low-down sinner. And they said that, that the next night they came back and that woman didn't come, and some woman got up in the church and testified that she, she prayed that that woman wouldn't be back, and she thanked God that she didn't come back to their church. Now, I know y'all, I know y'all, y'all, I know y'all ain't like that, but there's some people like that. And, you know, we, we need to realize that God, God that God's going to judge. He, he is. Ain't nobody going to get by. Nobody. Huh? And I'm not in this old modern church world where everybody just lets their hair down, does everything. God loves you anyway, just like you are. He does love you, but he ain't going to leave you like you are. He's going to call you to holiness. Every child of God that gets the call are called unto holiness. Everyone. I don't care if it's Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of God. 
and a thousand more you can name. If the Lord, if they answer the call of the Lord, it is a holiness call. It's a call up and out and into the light. Can you say amen? But I want our church here, as we go into this summer of soul winning, I want us to develop, and we, we have got to get rid of that old crusty spirit. Amen. A lot of times when people really don't want to live right, and they do anyways, they get mad. And they think, well, if I have to live it, you do too. You ever have little kids out playing and you make one of them sit down and they say, look, they're still up. They're still up. Well, leave that to mom and dad. She knows why. That's the way we, I live by the look of I'm going to leave that up to the Lord. I'm going to tell you this. Holiness is right. Holy living according to the Bible is right. But it must stem from that heart of mercy. You know why we live, We can live and not do the things we used to do? It's the mercy of the Lord. It's the grace of God. It's his tender compassion upon us. I probably shouldn't have spent all this time on this, but I just couldn't get by this one part of this verse and where the Son of God said, I, I learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I'm not come to the righteous, to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Stand with me. God bless you. Thank you for coming.